however you want to treat this scenario. It's very important. It's called summertime. Part of the personal development challenge is to be challenged to learn to nourish all of your values from a garden to a family relationship, to a love affair, to a marriage, to a business, anything that's valuable to you called equity. You've got to nourish it, you've got to feed it, you've got to take care of it, but you've also got to defend it. It's called the way things are. Key. In the summer. Now here's number four. Fourth major lesson in life to learn. In the fall, in the harvest. Learn to reap in the harvest. Without complaint. Important part of personal development. Reap in the harvest without complaint. Take full responsibility. Once you've learned this scenario, it's not the seed, it's not the soil, it's not the sunshine, it's not the rain, it's not the miracle of the giving of life, it's not the seasons that's to be criticized. We must take personal responsibility. So in the harvest, take personal responsibility. It's your crop. Whatever you've reaped, it's your crop. Take responsibility. No complaint. And here's the next one. No apology. The best of human maturity is no apology if you've done well. And no complaint if you haven't. Knowing that that's where the answers lie. Within and then without in the miracle of the possibilities that we have to work with. Those are the four major lessons in life to learn. Let's talk about some more parts of personal development. Here's the first one. Physical. The physical side. Got to take care of yourself. Do not neglect to take care of yourself. Good phraseology used in the Bible, in my amateur way, but let me put it to you best I can. Here's what it says. Treat your body like a temple. That's a good phrase, good suggestion. A temple meaning something you take extremely good care of. A temple. That's a good phrase. Treat your body like a temple, not a woodshed. A temple, a temple. Take good care. It's the only place you've got to live currently. The temple. Nutrition. My mother studied nutrition, passed it along to me, passed it along to my father, my children, my grandchildren. What a legacy that was. Learning to just take care of your stuff. Key phrase. Some people don't do well because they don't feel well. They've got the gifts, they've got the skills. Maybe they just haven't taken care of themselves. They don't have the vitality. Key phrase, vitality is a major part of success. Vitality. So take care of yourself. I know a guy that raises racehorses. I'm telling you, the guy feeds his horses better than he feeds himself. He's so careful how he feeds his horses. He's so careful what they eat. He's so careful that they get everything. And because of that extreme care, I mean, these are magnificent animals. They can run like the wind. But you ought to see this guy. <laughs> Ten steps up a flight of stairs, and I mean, he's all out of breath. His horses can run like the wind, and he can hardly make it up the steps. The guy takes care of his animals better than he takes care of himself. Some people feed their dogs better than they feed their kids. physical. Now there's all kinds of parts to physical. Here's one. Appearance is part of the physical. Never have a second chance to make a first impression. The physical side. And here's some of the best advice on appearance I can give you. It comes from ancient script again. It says, God looks on the inside, people look on the outside. Isn't that good information? Now you say, well, people shouldn't judge you by how you look. Well, let me give you a clue. They do. <laughs> they do. You can't deal in these shoulds and shouldn'ts. You'll be tipped over the rest of your life. Now, of course, when people get to know you, 
They'll judge you by more than what they see. But at first, they're going to take a look. So, here's the best advice I can give you. Make sure the outside is a major reflection of what's going on inside. The physical side. A few minutes a day, stay healthy. A little bit of nourish, little bit of study on nutrition, stay healthy. Key. Now here's the next part of personal development, the spiritual part. Now, I'm an amateur on the spiritual side. I do happen to believe that human beings are more than just an advanced life form. An advanced species of the animal kingdom. I, I do believe humans are a special creation. That's just my personal belief, and I don't ask you to buy it. But here's what I do ask you to buy. If you do believe in spirituality in any manner, here's my best advice. Study it and practice it. Do not neglect your values. Do not neglect your virtues. If you do believe in spirituality, my advice is study it and practice it. Don't let it go unstudied. Don't let it go unnourished, if you do believe. That's my best advice on the spiritual side. Now here's the third part, the mental side. Part of this personal development challenge is to develop mentally. Learn, study, grow, change. It's what schooling is all about. And the human development takes time, incredible amounts of time. That's why we've taken the time for this seminar. It just takes time. Some things you can't cover in a 20-minute speech. You can't cover in a little five-minute talk. It takes time. For humans, it takes, seem like, more time than any other life form, human beings. The little wildebeest in Africa. Guess how much time it's got as soon as it's born to be able to run with the pack so it doesn't get eaten by the lions. Guess how much time it's got? A few minutes. As soon as the little wildebeest is born, tries to stand up, falls down, its mother nudges it, gets it to stand back up, falls back down. Finally, on little shaky legs, it tries to nurse. Mother pushes it away. She moves away, so it can't nurse. Why, you can't nurse now. You've got to develop some strength now. The lions, the lions, the lions. Falls down, gets back up, tries to nurse. Mother pushes it away. No. You've got to get these legs strong. How much time have we got? Not much time. Mama Wildebeest says, not much time. Not hours, not days, minutes. Wow. But the human baby, wow. After 16 years, we're not sure. <laughs> Unbelievable amount of time it takes. So it does take time for personal development. It does take time for spiritual development, physical development. But here's also what takes time, and that's your mental development. Feeding the mind. Nourishing the mind. Some people read so little, they got rickets of the mind. They couldn't give you a good, strong argument as to their own personal beliefs. Here's one of the challenges we've got as parents. And that is to get our kids ready to debate the major life issues of the 90s. They've got to get ready to debate. We've spent this last couple of decades debating communism. Communism taught capital belongs in the hands of the state. We've been teaching, no, capital belongs in the hands of the people. Communism taught. People are too dumb and stupid to know what to do with capital. You gotta take capital away from all the dumb, stupid people and give it to the all-knowing, all-wise state. And let the state run everything and let the people meekly show up for their work assignment. All glory to the state, communism taught. Tid says, well, is that right? No, all glory to the people. Let the state be the servant of its people, not the people be the servant of the state. I'm telling you, you've got to be able to pick up those ideologies. You've got to be able to pick up the philosophy. And here's the next part. You've got to be able to defend it. If you can't defend your virtues and if you can't defend your values, I'm telling you, even in the 90s, you'll fall prey to philosophies that are not in your best interest. 
And we've got to help our teenagers. We've got to help our kids, especially, to be able to debate the major life issues, the political issues and the social issues and the religious issues and the spiritual issues and the nutritional issues and, and the economic issues and all of the rest of the issues that are valuable for us to build the kind of equities we want. You got to get yourself ready. And one of the ways you got to get ready is not just physical and not just spiritual. You got to get ready mentally. And this is where Shof went to work on me, to be ready mentally, to develop the philosophy and also be able to defend your virtues and your values. Let's go through it. You need a good library. Shof got me started on my library. Here's one of the books he recommended, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Think and Grow Rich. Shove said to me, doesn't that book and title intrigue you? Think and Grow Rich. Don't you have to read that book? Think and Grow Rich. I said, yes, sir. By Napoleon Hill. I went and found that book in a used bookstore. That's where I had to start. In a used bookstore, I paid less than 50 cents for it. I've still got it. It's one of the rare hardback covers. Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Wow, Shof was right. Get a library started. It'll change your life. Any home over $200,000 has got a library. Why do you suppose that is? Wouldn't that make you curious? How come every home over $200,000 has got a library? Does that tell you something? Does that educate you at all? You say, well, I can't afford a $200,000 home. It doesn't matter what size home. Take your present apartment, clean out a closet, call it your library, and start acting intelligent. <laughs> and start this process like I did. Start developing a library. Here's what your library needs to show, that you're a serious student of health and life, spirituality, culture, uniqueness, sophistication, economics, prosperity, productivity, sales, management, skills, values of all kind. Let your library show you're a serious student. Don't be casual in learning. Don't be lazy in learning. Information is the key. Learning is the beginning of wealth. Learning is the beginning of health. Learning is the beginning of prosperity. Learning is the beginning of democracy, the beginning of freedom. All values, all virtues start with the learning process. So don't be lazy in learning. Don't be lazy in gathering the library that will teach you and instruct you. And I got that book, Think and Grow Rich. Some of the ideas in that book inspired me no end, helped me to change my life. Now it's got some weird stuff in it. You know, it's got some weird stuff. Napoleon was weird. So you got to <laughs> separate out a little of this weird stuff. But you can do that. You can separate out the weird stuff. Okay. Unless you're weird, just do the weird stuff. <laughs> anyway. Remember, don't be a follower. Be a student. That's the key to all books. Don't be a follower. Be a student. Okay. Another book he recommended. Help me become financially independent. We're going to cover that before we finish this afternoon. The book was entitled, The Richest Man in Babylon. The Richest Man in Babylon by George Clayson, C-L-A-S-O-N. This little book, The Richest Man in Babylon, I use it as a textbook teaching teenagers how to be rich by 40, living in America, 35 if you're extra bright, much sooner if you find a unique opportunity. I got rich by the time I was 31, didn't wait till 35. If you find a unique opportunity. So we'll get into that after we come back from our next break. Richest man in Babylon, get your library started. Here are some key sections to put in your library called mental food. In fact, we call it food for thought. It's so important to nourish the mind, not just the body, but nourish the mind key phrase. Now it needs to be well balanced. You can't live on mental candy. Somebody says, well, I just read this positive stuff. That's too second grade. You've got to get out of second grade. You can't just be inspired. You've got to be taught. You can't just be inspired. 
You've got to be educated. Key. Here's a good book. It's called How to Read a Book. Good title. How to Read a Book by Mortimer Adler. In this book, How to Read a Book, Mortimer, you know, is the, is the chief editor of the new Encyclopedia Britannica. A good set of books, right, to have in your library. The Encyclopedia Britannica, chief editor, Mortimer Adler, he's, still in, he's in his 80s. He's still active, still writing books. I've got several of his books, The Six Great Ideas, a lot of books, Mortimer Adler. But he wrote this book, How to Read a Book. Now, in this book, How to Read a Book, not only does he give you some good suggestions on how to get the most out of a book, it's one thing to read it, it's another thing to get the best out of it. He'll give you some techniques on how to get the best out of a book. It's very good. But here's what's also in his book, How to Read a Book. A list of what he calls the best writings ever written. The best writings ever written. I've used it as a centerpiece for my library. So I'm just asking you, take a look. If it suits you, fine. If it doesn't suit you, hey, keep looking until you find something to suit you. But well balanced. Let me give you some of that balance. Number one, history. We've all got to have a sense of history. American history, national history, international history, family history, political history. We all need a sense of history. Shortest history lesson. Opportunity mixed with difficulty. No matter how far back you go, a thousand years ago, two thousand years ago, three thousand, four thousand years ago, I'm telling you, it all reads the same. Once you understand the thread that it isn't going to change, then what's going to change for my life? Answer, looks like I'm going to have to change. History helps us to understand how it is, what there is to work with, seed, soil, sunshine, rain, and what human beings have done with it in the past, and how many of them have, like I did by age 25, they have messed up. That's what history's for. Be a good student of history. Here's a good book, Lessons of History by Durant. Lessons of History by Durant. This little book is only 100 pages, but I'm telling you, it's so well written, you'll be intrigued, as I was. This little book, Lessons of History by Durant. 